As excited as I am that this is a new extraction film, I do have a slight worry this is going to go down the Taken route. Like the next one's going to be called Extraction 3 Extract Harder. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Extraction 2, the highly anticipated sequel to the first film, which was honestly kind of a surprise. There wasn't a lot going on when that was released back in 2020. We all were kind of stuck in the house, and I think it was the perfect time to release it because everyone watched it. And it was a very well put together film by a bunch of fantastic stunt coordinators. One of them being Sam Hargrave, who is the director of this film and worked on the stunt films for a lot of the Marvel movies. This definitely was feeling into that inspiration that the John Wick films had ignited. I was a big fan of the first one, not only for just how the film was put together, from the one long one shot to the visceral of the action, but also just the setting. I really enjoyed it in India. I liked how it also incorporated a lot of Indian actors. Uh, there was also the lawyer character who was kind of like the unknown parable. Like he was technically a bad guy, but you also wanted him to succeed just as much as you wanted Chris Hensworth's character to succeed. Multi-layer of the story was really, really fun. And that was something that I was looking to see if they were going to implement that into the second film. Not so much, but they really did up the action. Now, the first one really ended with that whole element of you wondering whether he was alive or not. And truly speaking, I think they ended it that way because they didn't know it was going to be such a success. But because the first one did so well and they were able to rely off that ambiguity, they were able to bring him back. And basically, he's given a mission to go into this Chechenian prison to rescue the sister of his wife. So we're almost going into the Taken route with just the simplicity of what the mission is. And then we're also going into generic Chechen bad guys. That was something that I was a little bit worried about because, oh no, Chechen bad guys. We've only seen you a billion times at this point. Is this just the surplus of guys who didn't die in Expendables 2? That is probably going to be my first and very major complaint about this movie is that the bad guys kind of suck. They're just so boring. They're just, ooh, I've got Scar. Oh, I have to take care of brother. Ah, I'm evil. That's kind of it. There's not really as much of a villain aspect in this film as the first one did. The first one had two pitting war criminals, which, by the way, this one starts the same way as the first one did with someone finding out bad news in a prison. And this one just has a, a big sort of generic stamp on it when it comes to what the plot is. The first one had a lot more levels to it in terms of who was included into the story, not just including the lawyer and the kid that Chris Hemsworth has to protect, but all of the criminals, the corrupt cops. Hell, the kids, like the child soldiers in it that Chris has to slap at one point. There was a lot of different characters into it, whereas this movie is longer, but doesn't have as much meat in it. It does have three very big action sequences. I would really say two, which is the one that everyone's been seeing, which is the one that it's a long shot. Again, I think I recorded it at 20 minutes and 40, or no, 21 minutes and seven seconds. It's phenomenal it's one of the best one shots ever you obviously see the edits here and there if you're really looking but it's phenomenal it goes from inside the prison to outside the prison to into a car to into a train it's phenomenal it's really well done i still think the first one's better but that's just my kind of feeling because the first one while not being as long has car chases in it. There is a car chase in this one too. Feel like the first one was done a little bit better, but I know that you're still going to enjoy it. It's still really good. It's kind of like comparing the three one shots in the Daredevil series. Season one is honestly the best ones. The second one is the most entertaining, but it also is kind of the most janky. And the third one is my personal favorite, not only because of the length, but just because they added story into it as well. So it's just personal opinion, honestly. As the film goes on, though, they do try to incorporate this element with his ex-wife. And I know it's trying to add an element to it, but I feel like it's a lot more of that telling rather than showing that the first one did. The first one had a lot of show, like you had to kind of interpret what... Chris had gone through. Yes, he did explain what had happened to his kid to the kid in the film, but I just felt there was a lot more of a visual grittiness to his character in the first one, whereas in the second one, he is kind of getting a little bit of redemption, but it's just so 
That's the best way to put it. Now, I am being a little bit of a negative Nancy about this movie, and that's just because I thought that the overall plot is the weakest part of this movie. Now, I know you're not watching this movie entirely for that reason, but that is one of the reasons why you want to watch it, right? I feel that the second one's plot definitely is the weakest element, and it's far weaker than the first one. The action, I feel, is on the same level as the first one. Some parts better, but like I said, there's two really big action sequences and then there's the finale, and that, that's it. The last one's kind of, eh. like, they try to make it seem as though he's in a dire situation, but you've already seen this guy take a billion bullets and hits and slashes and everything in the first one and still barely survive, so you have to chop his arm off or something in this one to make that kind of higher stakes feeling be warranted, and it, it just isn't. So, in the end, I feel that Extraction 2 is still fun. It's still phenomenal. It still should be commended for the stunt excellence that it has, for the action set pieces that it does have. But I definitely feel like plot took a back seat, and I'm a little bit upset about that. And I'm kind of wondering how they're going to work it with the third one, because they are making a third one. It's kind of like me for the John Wick movies. I love the John Wick movies, except for the third one. I think the third one's got like great action sequences, but the plot is... is thin as a napkin. The first one is still my favorite one because that was a full complete story from beginning, middle to end. And while Extraction 2 does have technically a beginning, middle and end, it's definitely another one in the franchise. Either way, I'm going to give Extraction 2 a 4 out of 7. I actually want to review the first one now. Like, I actually started watching it again immediately after watching Extraction 2 and I could already feel that my feelings that i had were warranted but i'll do a video about that anyways guys i hope you enjoyed the review if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe until then see you guys next time